so uh, as someone uh, mentioned earlier it's like a circle this this graph that you see here or this chart that you see here this is what a pie graph a pie chart looks like okay so it is a graph which is represented in the form of a circle and it is divided into sectors into paths okay you can see this graph here it is clearly divided it's like a pizza okay wherein your uh, the circle is divided into pieces or sectors now each of these pieces or sectors it represents a part of the whole now typically all these percentages that are seen over here will total to 100% okay so this is what a chart a pie chart looks like now uh, this pie chart here is the contribution to the economy of turkey by sector so there are uh, about seven or eight sectors which contribute to the economy of turkey and what is the percentage contribution of each of these sectors is what is represented by these charts okay now you can see that there is one chart for 2000 and one chart for 2016 representing the same data okay so uh, just to give a comparison okay just if you look at both these pie charts here you can see uh, agriculture so if you see agriculture stands out over here because it is the largest uh, the sector which contributes to the economy of turkey but in 2016 you can see this 24% has reduced to 14% okay whereas uh, if with 24% reducing to 14% which is the largest contributing sector in 2016 healthcare yes. absolutely so although there is no change okay healthcare in 2000 was 17% and in 2016 was also 17% but with agriculture falling from 24 to 14% in 2016 healthcare uh, became the largest contributing sector to the economy of turkey okay now uh, this is what the, uh, uh, typically a pie chart looks like uh, it's fairly simple to interpret okay and uh, in my opinion uh, when it comes to data related questions pie chart is one of the more simpler questions to uh, attempt okay although you don't have a choice when it comes to uh, uh, writing questions if you're lucky you might get a pie chart because pie chart is one of the simpler question types okay now our focus today we are going to pick up a particular question and i'm going to take you paragraph by paragraph as to how you can you know draft your entire report okay so we are going to take each paragraph and see how we can draft each of those paragraphs and the pie chart that we are going to look at our question is what you see on the screen right now so i'm just reading out the question here this is typically what the question will look like the pie charts below show the greenhouse gas emissions by sector so basically uh, sector wise uh, emission of greenhouses for two countries australia and new zealand for last year okay uh, summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant so this is what your uh, pie chart is depicting it is telling you about the greenhouse gas emissions sector wise okay so which sector uh, emitted how much of greenhouse and it is given for two countries that is australia and new zealand and the period for it to which it pertains is the previous year okay so you can see that there are two pie charts for the two countries and there are sectors mentioned okay so for example you have agricultural methane which contributes 29% to total greenhouse emissions in australia whereas you also have agricultural nitrous oxide which contributes 11% whereas in uh, new zealand you can see that agricultural methane contributes much more not much more slightly marginally higher that is 32% whereas nitrous oxide is 15% okay so sector wise what are the greenhouse gas emissions in these two countries so what is it that you do in a pie, pie chart okay the information that you see in this 
visual okay the visual information that you see you have to convert it in the form of text minimum of 150 words but as we say around 170 to 180 words and you have to write it in the form of paragraphs you cannot use bullet points or notes notes are when you don't write complete sentences so you have to write your report in the form of a paragraph in i mean in uh, you have to uh, organize your data into paragraphs and complete sentences okay no bullet points absolutely okay now uh, before we write uh, this the report pertaining to this particular pie chart we are going to look at the structure uh, the recommended structure for a report okay now this this structure which i am sharing over here it is a common structure irrespective of the type of uh, diagram that you get so whether it is a map whether it's a process diagram uh, or any other chart okay the structure will remain the same okay so you typically will have four paragraphs in a report you can have a fifth paragraph only if there is more data if you think that the data that has to be interpreted is more okay in quantity then you can add a fifth paragraph otherwise four paragraphs are sufficient okay now what do you write in the first paragraph information that you need to write in each of the paragraphs is specified very clearly so if you follow the structure it is very easy to write a good report in the given time of 20 minutes and with the given uh, length that is the word count okay but you need to follow this structure it makes it simple for you to do your writing tasks okay now what is the first what do you write in your first paragraph all you need to do is paraphrase the question uh, it's not exactly rearranging the words you are using different language okay you use different language to convey the same meaning so your question you rewrite it using different language without changing the meaning of the sentence so that is what paraphrasing is all about okay and you have uh, typical uh, typical phrases which you can use to start this first paragraph that those phrases are the graph illustrates or the graph demonstrates or the graph shows or the graph depicts okay this is how you can start your first paragraph you can also include values so what in what uh, what is the value used to depict that particular information now in this pie chart normally the data is depicted in the form of percentages okay so the value is in percentages if your diagram shows the source of information you can add the source of information as well okay so uh, you might see a sentence there in your diagram which says source and it might give you the name of a research center maybe or a website uh, so the source of the data is xyz okay so that's how you can mention the source of information as well this is not necessarily there in every uh, diagram that you get okay so this is what you write in the first paragraph now what is it that you write in the second paragraph it is the overview if you remember while we were discussing the um, assessment criteria with regards to task achievement i had said that you should write a overview now what is the overview the overview in the second paragraph you include include one or two very general trends or the most striking features that you see in your diagram okay um, so for example uh, if it is talking about sales if it's a bar chart and it is talking about sales which uh, which um, product has the highest sales and which product has the lowest sales is what you could give uh, right in your overview okay uh the only thing is one thing that you need to remember is you will not mention any details you will not mention any numbers okay no figures should be mentioned in your overview okay now we are going to look at each of these paragraphs in in more in detail we are going to break it down more in detail as we go ahead in the session today okay so if this is a little confusing just wait for a while and we'll see how we can write paragraph two for the a pie chart that we just uh, just saw uh, greenhouse gas emissions in australia and new zealand 
Okay. Then we have paragraph three and four. In paragraph three and four, you have to write about the main features. Okay. So whatever are the main points that you see in your pie chart, you will describe it in detail and you will support it with numbers. So if you can make comparisons, you should also make comparisons. So for example, the one which we are going to look at today, you can definitely make comparisons. Okay. So which was the highest contributing source? Uh, was it the same in Australia and New Zealand or was it different? Okay. Which, um, which sector contributed the lowest? Okay. Again, was it the same for both the countries? Was it different? You know, so comparisons can definitely may be made in the chart that we are going to look at more in detail. Okay. Now, this is a typical structure that you follow for a report. And uh, irrespective, as I said earlier, irrespective of the question type, the structure of the report remains the same. Obviously, the content is going to be different depending upon the question. Okay. Each, in fact, each question will, the content will change, but the structure will remain the same. Right. Now we are going to look at the, uh, each of these paragraphs in detail. In fact, we are going to uh, see how you can write the paragraph one two, three, and four for this particular question. Okay. Now, uh, drawing your attention to the previous slide, what did I say for paragraph one? In the paragraph one, you are going to paraphrase the question. This is the language that you can use to start the sentence. You can include the values and source of information. Okay. Now, this particular pie chart does not give you the source of information. So obviously this cannot be there. Now your question, this is your question. Okay. This is the question statement, which you need to paraphrase. The pie chart below shows, pie charts below show the greenhouse gas emissions by sector for Australia and New Zealand for last year. Okay. Now this is your answer over here. I'm going to explain how the paraphrasing has been done. Okay. The two pie charts depict, okay? So as I said over here, the graph illustrates, the graph depicts. So that is the language that I have used. The two pie charts depict sector-wise emission. Now, what is your question saying? Greenhouse gas emissions by sector. So I have not changed the words, okay? In fact, I, I, I could not get any synonym for greenhouse gas emissions. So what did I do? Instead of changing the words, I changed the structure. Okay, I said sector-wise emissions. Instead of saying emissions by sector, I said sector-wise emissions of greenhouse gases in Australia and New Zealand. Okay, so not much of a change. I have used the same language, but you can either change, uh, you know, the way the information has been uh, mentioned. What is mentioned towards the end of the sentence, you can begin the sentence with that, or you can change the part of speech. Okay, so in say increase is a word, okay, you can say increasing. Or you can say increased, okay, so changing the form of the word also amounts to paraphrasing. So without making much changes over here, I have paraphrased the sentence. And what have I also added, I have also added the value okay so the data is for the last year in percentages so here it is for last year is mentioned in the same sentence so what did i do i made it into a separate sentence i put that information into a separate sentence and i also added the value in that particular sentence so this is how you can paraphrase the question you can add the value and you can write your first paragraph very simple, nothing difficult about it, okay? Take a look. I'm just going to read this once again. The two pie charts depict sector-wise emissions of greenhouse gases in Australia and New Zealand. The data is for the last year in percentages, okay? Now, if you see, uh, I have used a comma over here, okay? And I have used full stops. Primarily, comma and full stops are going to be the most commonly used uh, punctuations in your uh, reports as well as in your essays. Okay. Remember that capital letters are also punctuations. 
Okay, so for example, uh, names of places, Australia and New Zealand, these have to be mentioned in capitals. You start a letter with a capital letter. You end a sentence with a full stop. All these might seem very minor things, but mind you, they are a part of grammar. If you don't use punctuations properly, you will lose out on band code. So ensure that you use your punctuations correctly. Okay, uh, before we move on to pa paragraph two, okay, I am uh, uh, overview that is the second paragraph is where you write or you bring out one or two significant features that stand out in your diagram. Okay, can we say that agriculture, can we say agriculture is the highest contributing sector? Okay, yes. because both of them put together is agriculture. So this is 20 plus 10, 30, 40 percent. Okay. In Australia, it is 40% and in New Zealand, it is 30, 40, 47%. So this is the highest contributing sector is agriculture, right? So that is a very significant point which you should actually write in your overview. Okay, what else? When you write the highest, you can always write the lowest as well. Okay, because uh, it follows, you know, highest and lowest. So what is the lowest contributing sector in each of the waste. countries? Waste. Okay. So waste. waste is here. It is waste. Is it waste? Yeah, it is waste in New Zealand also. Okay. So what do you see about waste in Australia and waste in New Zealand? How can you compare these two? Yeah. It's not almost. Exactly. Okay. It's, yeah. It is half. Okay. So that is the second, third point that you can put. That's it. You've got three points. So remember, guys, that the significant, the most significant points have to come out. Okay. Uh, so that's what you write in your uh, overview. Okay. But remember that you don't mention uh, numbers. Okay. So uh, quickly uh, repeating what we saw earlier, include one or two general trends and the most striking features of the graph. No details, no figures or numbers to be mentioned. Your second paragraph can look something like this. Overall, it is clear that agriculture was the highest contributor to greenhouse gases emitted in both countries. Although waste contributed the least in Australia, it was double that of New Zealand. Okay. So you have written the highest contributing sector, the lowest contributing sector, and you have also brought out the point that it was double. Waste in Australia uh, contributed double uh, of what it was in New Zealand. Okay. Uh, you can use some alternative language to begin this paragraph. Instead of saying overall it is clear, you can also say that it is clear that agriculture was or it is evident that agriculture was the highest contributor or you can use the word apparent it is apparent that agriculture was the highest contributor to greenhouse gases okay so alternative language which you can use to be begin the overview paragraph okay uh, any questions about the overview okay uh, let's move on. Now, uh, as I had said earlier in paragraph three and four, you are going to now you will be giving a more detailed description of the main features in the pie charts. OK, so select and write about the main features in detail supported with numbers. So when you write paragraph three and four, you should whatever points you are writing, you should um, support those points with figures numbers okay uh add a fifth paragraph only if there is more data so over here what i have done is i have uh organized the information in just two paragraphs okay now i'm going to start with the main point which was agriculture okay this is the highest i have to repeat the point because i have to give the figures although i have mentioned it in the overview right so how do i write this in New Zealand, so this is New Zealand here, agricultural methane and nitrous oxide. So I have combined the two together. Okay, I have not written them separately. I have said agricultural methane and nitrous oxide together produced a whopping 47% of the greenhouse gases, whereas 
this is a linker okay whereas in australia it was marginally lower so this is a collocation it was marginally lower at 40 percent but still the highest source okay so the first point again if you see that I'm not just mechanically saying that it is 29% for methane, it is 11% for nitrous oxide. I've combined the two and indicated that agriculture is the highest contributor, okay? And I have compared 47 and 40, okay? I have compared what it was in New Zealand and what it is in Australia. I have used collocations, I have used the numbers as well, okay? Uh, next. Now, in New Zealand, okay, 32% you have, then you have 15%. Both these have been combined and already mentioned. Now, what follows next in, uh, in uh, New Zealand, which is the next highest contributing sector? Transport. Transport. Yeah. And after transport, you have other energy, okay, 19 and 16%. Now, in uh, Australia, you can see transport is 25% as compared to 19% in uh, New Zealand. And what about other energy? Other energy, uh, someone had just spoken about this point, other, other energy is 16% in New Zealand, whereas in Australia, it is just 7%. So a little uh, 16, 8, so a little less than half. Okay. So here you can use words a little less than because it's not exactly half. Okay. So now let's see how this can be written. Transport and other energy sources followed with 19% and 16% of greenhouse gases attributed to these sectors in New York. Okay. Now, the picture in Australia was different. Transport having a significantly higher production of greenhouse gases at 25%. So I'm comparing 19% with 25%, significantly higher, okay? Uh, whereas at 7%, the contribution of other energy was significantly lower, okay? Now I have written significantly lower. You can also say that it was little less than half, okay? That also can be said. Or you can say that in New Zealand, it was almost double of what it was in. Australia. That is different language that you can use. Okay. So in the first paragraph, I have covered four sectors. Okay. So these four sectors are basically the top four sectors in New Zealand. Okay. They are not necessarily top four in Australia. For in Australia, other energy is not among the top four. Okay. Right. Now going on to the next paragraph. Interestingly, while the process of electricity, now electricity generation here is 19%. So here generation is the word I've made it, I've changed it to production, okay? So here in Australia, it contributed 19%, whereas in uh, New Zealand, it was only 10%. How can you compare 19% with 10%? What language can you use to compare 19 and 10? You can say that it was almost half, right? Yeah. So let's see. Interestingly, while the process of electricity production generated a sizable, so it was considerable. The amount was not very less. Sizable 19% of the greenhouse gases in Australia. At 10%, it was just half that in New Zealand. Okay. So since it was 10% in New Zealand, I'm saying it was about half that in New Zealand, half of that in New Zealand, okay? Then the last point that I'm making, okay? So I'm using the linking word lastly. Lastly, industrial processes and solvents and waste together accounted for 9% of Australia's greenhouse gases. So what have I done? I've not written waste and uh, industrial processes and solvents separately. I have combined the two of them, okay? 4% plus 5%, I have said it is 9%. So, uh, together accounted for 9% of Australia's greenhouse gases, which was almost the same, okay? So, how much was it in New Zealand? It was 6 plus 2, 
eight percent. So I have said that it was almost the same as New Zealand at eight percent. Okay. So effectively, I have covered all the sectors, but I have not just mechanically written each sector separately. Somewhere I have combined some sectors. Uh, I have also made comparisons between Australia and New Zealand. Okay. So compare the main features, write the main features sub supported with numbers. That is how you can write paragraph three and four in detail. 